Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh. Now, Melissa is the founder of the Stock Swoosh, and she's a very sought-after stock market analyst on numerous financial media platforms, including Fox Business Network, RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS News. It goes on and on. Her focus is on a unique golden gap strategy that pinpoints how to leverage institutional money in the stock market particularly around the open of the markets. Now, in today's presentation, she's going to be talking about making money shorting gaps, why the market open is the best time to trade, how to spot a pandemic-driven bearish move in a stock, and what to do when you see a power trend move short. And so with that, we'd like to welcome Melissa to the room. Melissa, how are you doing today? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Terrific. Let's see if this works. Good morning, Melissa. Nice to have you join us as always. Thanks for having me. Can you see my screen? Oh, yes, we see your screen. It looks beautiful. Great. There's the New York I love. <laughs> <laughs> One day we'll be back to normal. I don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> looks great outside my window, though, still. <laughs> Well, thanks for having me. Well, Melissa, it's all yours. Take it away. You have an hour. We'll be tracking questions on our end, so you we can we can get some at the end of the presentation, or if you want to pause, however you want to handle it, the show is yours. <coughs> yeah, whatever whatever works for you. If people have questions in between, I can't see the Q and A, so if you want to interrupt, if somebody has a question, that's fine as we're going along. Okay, I'll be glad to do that. Okay, welcome everyone. Hopefully everyone is having a great day today. And it's interesting because the market gapped down today. So it's funny that we're talking about gaps. Although we're trying to bounce here right now in the SPY today. And I think that there is a high probability that the market will reverse the gap today and probably close green. The size of the body of the market today could be a baby green or a medium green. We got about four hours left in the day. If we have time, we will look at that when we're done. <clears throat> but what I do is short gaps, and that's how I make money. And we're gonna talk about that this afternoon. So, do you wanna make money in the market? If you're somebody that's been thinking about trading, it probably is because you wanna make extra money. <clears throat> right now, we're during this period, we're still in the COVID, one year into it almost, and many, many people are working from home. And there's some people that are unemployed, or they're not working as many hours. So they're looking for extra money. Whether you want to trade full-time or part-time, it's a nice thing to do because at least what I do with gaps is I don't spend a lot of time trading. Like we ran out of the trade today. We did Rost, uh, Rost gap down in earnings, R-O-S-T. We'll look at that trade today. We were in and out in like 10 minutes, okay? And now I'm here talking to you and it's 12 o'clock and when I'm done, uh, I'll do whatever I want for the rest of the day. So it's nice to be able to make money quickly in the morning and you don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. But I find that when a lot of people have the market bug, they just never kind of lose it. Once you're bitten by the market bug, you make money or you lose money and you're back and forth until you finally invest yourself in it full on and say, I really, really want to do this. I'm 100% committed to doing it. I absolutely love trading and I've got to figure out something that's going to work for me that I'm going to be able to consistently make money because really even people that are losing have made money in trades. That's what keeps them going. The idea of being successful and doing this and having the longevity has to do with the consistency, okay? So it's about hitting it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, getting the wins. While some trades I take lose, I still have more winners than losers. And that's the only way that you can get ahead with this thing. And so it's very interesting. <clears throat> I started trading, it was the end of 2008. And now here's 2021. <clears throat> and it's hard to believe, uh, I can't even imagine, like remember what my life was like before I started trading. But I was bitten with the market bug and I never looked back either. But when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. I took one class one class that's all i ever took it was a lot of money um and i learned the basics of technical analysis but i didn't learn how to make money and ultimately that was my drive my drive was to make money to do it because i wanted to do it as my career it wasn't a side gig for me and so it was something that i took very very seriously even from day one 
And I think a lot of people think of it as a side gig and never take it seriously and consequently lose year over year. So even if you're gonna do it only for five minutes a day, Monday through Friday, you still have to take it seriously if you wanna make money. And you're also risking your own hard-earned money in the market when you take trades. So you obviously wanna put it to good use. You know, otherwise you may as well go to Atlantic City, you know, and gamble. So trading is fun, but the purpose is making money, okay? And if you don't have a lot of time each day to devote to trading, gaps are a way to make money in the market because they move very, very fast. And again, it's extra income coming in each month. Even if you can only trade two days a week, even if you have your work schedule, your family schedule, whatever, two days a week is better than nothing, okay? So if you want to find a way to pick which stock to trade that will have a big, big move, like we did with the Ross this morning, okay? then gaps are a way to do it. And very often people come to me, they have no idea where to start. They're all over the place. If you're listening to people talk today, there's many, 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 many different ways to trade the market, okay? I've become successful by focusing on one thing that is all that I do, that is all that I've ever done. I've never done anything else and I never will need to because of the fact that this works. And so year over year, I've just increased my size or my risk for trades, and I use it for options and day trades. So the focus has, has really helped me become extremely good at what I do. So I have a niche. And so my niche is shorting and gaps, although I will go long gaps, and we will talk about a bullish gap today, which was Twitter as well. So how do you become successful in the market? You need a strategy, you need a focus, and you need a system. And it's really just like, like if, you know, if you wanted to play a sport, you wanted to get good at a sport, you would have to have a focus, okay? A focus on one sport. You wouldn't try to get good at baseball, basketball, tennis all at once. You'd choose one sport. You'd have one focus on how to get there. And then you would figure out what your plan of action is to get good. So trading is the same thing. You have to have the focus when you're doing it. So for me, it was gaps. And one of the reasons that I think this is a great strategy is time of the day, doesn't take that long for them to set up. I'm in my trades between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. You can also use them for options or day trades, like I said. And the options you can put the trade on and you don't have to sit necessarily babysit it, you know, all day. <clears throat> and the other reason I like apps is because they have big moves, okay? So you can take a couple hundred shares or a couple thousand shares and have a big move and you can have some really, really nice uh, profits, and that's what we'll talk about in the Rost example today. But basics are this. What is a gap? So for those of you that don't know what a gap is, I'm going to explain to you what is a gap. This is a chart of the SPY. Now I'm going to go back here. <coughs> this was January. Market closed here, gap down. Closed here right around, I don't know, it was 385 and change. Gap down here in the morning around 382. So this was a bearish gap. So anyways, what is a gap? It's a difference between the close and the open. So the market closed here, boom, open here. So the market closes every day at four and opens every day at 9.30. In between four o'clock and 9.30, sometimes trades go off in the post-market and the pre-market. We saw that today. Okay, what happened today? The market actually was up last night in the post-market. Then it was up this morning in the pre-market. Then it reversed this morning and it actually was down in the pre-market then and then we opened down because there was bad data that came out this morning. I don't think it was that big of a deal, which is one of the reasons why I think we're going to hold here and bounce. But the fact is that trades go off at night and trades go off in the morning. I do not trade that period. Okay, I do not take positions on or off in that period. But that is what's happening. And what's happening in that period is the gap is being created. Okay, so I am not, I am not predicting whatever is going to gap. I am predicting what is going to happen after, after I see the gap. And in this case here, this was a short. This was the 27th of uh, January. Now let's look at a bullish gap. <coughs> this was to start up the month of February, which was extremely bullish. February here, the first we started out. Actually, this was a gap up here. And I'm seeing this here closed here, gapped up. To start the first day of February, rallied, closed here, gapped up day two. So we closed here like around, you know, whatever this was, 377. And then we opened up here around 380. And then we pretty much rallied. This was the first two weeks of the month of February in the SPY. The banks were making new highs and JPM was making brand new all-time highs and Goldman Sachs was rallying and making new highs then. We ran up 
And then we made new highs here, which was the last day we made a new high in the SPY, which was the 16th. Okay, so that was a couple of weeks ago. So anyways, this is a bullish gap. This is a bearish gap. Here's another one here. This was Walmart. This was a short. We shorted this and we did a put in it. Okay, a put is an option where you're basically betting that the stock is going to move lower. So I bought puts. So when I do options, I just buy the put if I think if the momentum is lower and I buy the call if the momentum is higher. And that's how I play it. So I predicted that Walmart would sell off. I was right. Dream target was 130. It came down here to that. Anyways, let's go back to the day before. Closed here, boom, gap down. Closed up here around 147, opened in the morning around 138. So I got up in the morning and I used my, my system that I created to determine that this would indeed continue lower, okay? Which is what it did. Now, I haven't looked at Walmart here today, but long story short, Walmart is still in the uptrend. But for whatever reason, it fell on the earnings, okay? So what I do is based on technical analysis and it's technical analysis in the gap. And I like shorting because short moves happen quickly. Panic happens fast. And I like to be in and out of my day trades quick. Like there's no, there's no panic. If, if you wanted to go long, I'm just gonna make up a name here, like Twitter. If you wanted to go long Twitter, you could go long Twitter today, you could go tomorrow, you could go Monday. There's no panic. Like you could buy Twitter whenever you want. If you're in Twitter and you're down in Twitter, you might be panicking today. Like when you get up in the morning in a position, if you're down, you will panic and sell it because you're down. Do you see the difference? So there's, it's panic buying is real. It's very, very rare though. But anyways, the last time I saw panic buying was probably like, I think it was two summers ago, BYND, which was Beyond Meat, kind of had that look to it, the panic buying. And that weird stock that everyone's been trading with the Reddit traders, the GME had some panic buying, but then it completely lost all of the momentum and move and it sold off. So panic buying is rare. Panic in shorts is real and happens on a regular basis every single solitary day, okay? So that's what here, was here in the Walmart and that is what I like to trade. So one of the other reasons I like to trade gaps is it has a great risk to reward payout. We're usually looking for one to one. So if you risk $1,000, looking to make 1,000. Risking 500, looking to make 500. Risking 2,000, looking to make 2,000 a trade. And this is whether I'm doing an option or a day trade. And that's a good amount of money to, to make pretty quickly, okay? And, and again, I'm in and out of my trade sometimes, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So it's really nice to have these quick profits. So many things are going on right now. There are, the Senate's talking about the stimulus bill today. Who knows if they're gonna pass it? Some version of it, my guess is, will pass in the next week. But the reality is the longer you're in trades, day trades okay the more you're at risk for volatility to flip things around back and forth so the faster you can quick money in the morning the better off you are because you don't have to contend with all the political stuff that's happening the wiggles and jiggles of the market fed minutes and, and reports that come out later in the afternoon getting in and getting out is the best best idea to consistently book money as early as you can before all this other stuff affects the market and actually before the market affects your trade, like if you're in a stock that the market would affect, like for example, if you're in something and you're long and then the market would sell off on some kind of negative news or something. So one of the reasons I like trading gaps is what? Institutional money. What do I mean by that? Hedge funds, big, big money, big professional traders that take positions in the market. So when I'm looking at it, okay, in the pre-market, I'm, re I'm going through it, I'm rating it, I'm reviewing it, I'm studying the chart, and I'm making a decision if I wanna do Rust, for example, okay? I'm looking for institutional buying or institutional selling in the pre-market. And so I have a rating system where I determine that. Institutional money is what moves stocks. Institutional money moves the market. And even though people complain about it, oh, the hedge funds, doopa doopa doo. The reality is, it is good that we have that kind of huge mass of money in the market. It is good that they move stocks. That is the way that people like you and I can make thousands of dollars because we can't move stocks by ourselves. That GME was a once-off. 
And in fact, they're not in control of that right now because the stock is nowhere near $500, let alone a thousand that the people said it was gonna to go to. And you won't get it there with that institutional money buying it up either. So it's very, very interesting because institutional money controls what actually happens in stocks in the market because it's a lot of money and it's a lot of power and that is what I'm looking for and that is what I wanna trade alongside and it makes it very easy to make money when you get that, okay? So they're not your enemy, but many, many people don't understand how to read that money. But if you can learn how to play with that money, which is what I've done and what I do, then it's very advantageous, okay? Very advantageous. So one of the other reasons to trade gaps is what? Focus. Focus on one thing, boom, one stock, one ticker symbol, one direction, one thing. Like I'm never going long and short the same stock the same day. And I don't trade all day long and I don't trade a million things. And if I am doing two or three things in a day, I'm probably not having a good morning. I probably took the first trade, lost, and had to take a second trade. My best days, my biggest days is one stock, one thing. And I will tend to do maybe a, 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 an option and a day trade in the same ticker symbol too. So anyways, getting back to what I was saying, it's a multi-purpose system that I use for options and day trades, but it's all based on gaps. And it's based on reading the institutional money in the gaps. And it's because they have big profits and that's why I like to trade them. Now let's look at the Rust. So this is what we did today. I have a live trading room I call the Trade Live. In fact, I'll put it on YouTube later. This here, this was yesterday. What's today, Wednesday? So Tuesday, Tuesday night this closed here. Right around 117 and change, boom. Open in the morning here around 114. Now this looks a little wily here, but anyways, bottom line is we shorted this, got the drop. Now I got out of this way before the low. This continued, our target originally was 113. It broke it and I got out, but it went all the way down to 112, broke that and actually went to 111 and change. Again, I like to do the fast straight, but this had a very, very nice move. This was a gap down, okay? So here was the trade. Entry was 113.80, shares for an advanced trader risk, 3,000, risk is 2,550, exit was 112.75, profit $3,150. Now over here is the one minute chart of the Rost, okay? So we did it here, right in here, snug is above. It's around 945-ish, okay? And we got the drop, boom, out. Now here you see actually where it went. Looks like it went to like a 111, 111.50 almost it got to. So you could have been in it for another dollar. And actually this was only into 10.30, now that I'm seeing here before it bounced. That was still a morning move. But it was a very, very nice trade that was quick. Now, if you wanted to take a thousand shares, a beginner risk, a lot, lot less size, risk was 8.50, <laughs> this is a nice trade. You could have made a thousand bucks risking seven hundred fifty. I mean, eight hundred fifty dollars. Again, you're in, out. Take it, get out. Boom, done. That's it. But if you wanted to hold it for like forty-five minutes, you could have held it. But it backed up here. It did back up. The stop held. Stop held where we had it. But it did back up, and then you had to wait for the second drop. Or what you could have done. Again, I didn't do this, but you could have taken it, got out where I called it, and then you could have retaken it. You could have retaken it and got out a second time. Anyways, the time of the trade was like 10 minutes. So that's what I do. And so I was able to do that, get done. <clears throat> Come on here, talk to you. And that's what I'm looking for every morning. And again, selling, go back to this here, it's the selling pressure, selling, 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 the pressure that comes in to something like this ROSC, it can happen like that. And so I find that trades short, like longs take longer to work. Shorts go faster. Again, because it's the idea that when people are down, they're gonna dump it. And there's no necessarily the, the rush, rush, rush about buying stocks, okay? And you sometimes have to wait longer for stocks to go to bigger targets. But you do have really nice big profits quickly, quickly, quickly in shorts. Now we did this yesterday, this continued today actually. This was DDD, this was yesterday's. Uh, the trading room's on, on my YouTube for the DDD, if you want to listen to me call it. We did it, and I got out of this early too, but this fell all the way down to the dream target as well. Uh, went to 31. 
But again, I did a morning trade. Now, what did this do? Closed here, gap down, boom, we shorted it, got the drop. This is the daily. And today you could have done it. Actually, I saw this here today, but uh, we didn't do this today, but you could have done this. And I didn't do an option in this, but actually you could have done an option in this too. Here was yesterday's. I squished this, you could see. If you wanted to be in it all day, this was the whole day of the one minute in yesterday's DDD. But I did it in the morning <laughs> and it went to my target. I got out. Actually, target was 35. Broke 35 and I took it. Entry 36.30. Shares 2,000. Risk was 2,600. Ends it at 34.60. Boom. 3,400 bucks. Two nice days of over 3,000 profit and really fast trades. That's good enough for me. But I, but I want to show you here going back. Well, now I'll show you here. This went to 31. From where we did this at 36, you could have made $5 on this. I, I mean, it's just insane. And again, the market drug down yesterday, which is what pulled this down and helped this continue. But we did it right in here. And I know there's a small, but I wanted to show you the whole day. And then we got the drop, boom, out. So I like to be in and out fast. If you took a thousand shares of this yesterday, you could have made 1,700 bucks. Some, some nice shorts in here lately. And some big moves in here lately. And some fast moves in here lately. And and again, this was earnings too. Sometimes we do gaps in earnings. Sometimes we do gaps with the market. Sometimes we do gaps for news. It depends. Things gap for many, many reasons. But these two were earnings gaps. We were in that trade yesterday for 15 minutes. But you could have been in it all day. You could have been in that all day as I showed you. And you could have made even more. Um, I did not because again, I like to get in and I like to get out. But that's just my habit. And I think it's a good habit. And so Melissa, if can I a couple of questions just came up before you move on with regard to your Rost trade. Mm -hmm. Uh you had mentioned that somebody had said, you know, what option would you have traded for Rost? Well, and I, do you buy put options ever? Yeah, I buy puts and I buy calls. I don't do any fancy dancy things. I'm not doing spreads or this or that. And so like I'm all in if I do it either wins or it loses. Now I didn't do this because uh, you know, some of them I think make more sense than others to do options in as far as the cost of them with the momentum. I think this was an easier day trade than an option to do to get in out quick. Do you know what I'm saying? But anyways, long story short, I do trade things like Amazon, Google, stuff that's really, really super expensive that I would never day trade as an option, even though sometimes those are a little pricey. I don't even know what this costs today to do an option. Somebody can look it up and tell me, but I would have done probably like if they had a strike of 114 and if they didn't, I would probably would have looked a strike below 114, 113, 112, I don't know. This probably doesn't have a lot of choices here. This isn't like Amazon. I don't know what, even what strikes this had, but if I had done a put in it, I would have bought it as close to the strike as I could have or something underneath it from where it was at initially out of the gate on the open. Hey, that's excellent. Thank you, Melissa. That's a, and that's an excellent point. You're getting in and out of these trades. And unless it's a real expensive stock, you're just buying the share straight yeah. out. But yeah. Well, yep. And again, you have to have a margin account to day trade actively. You can have a prop account or you can have a retail account. If you have an options account, you can have a cash account. So obviously you don't need to worry about margin. Now this was over $100 a share. So again, it depends what you can afford to, to take because you can open up an options account with two grand. If you go to a prop place, you can probably find a place with $2,500 minimum or 5,000 and get 10 to one margin. You know, that's up to you. But either way, your risk per trade has to do with the cash amount of your account. Whether you have an option account or whether you have a margin account, you can only risk the amount that you have available and it should never be your whole account. So, so for example, if you had $2,000 in an options account, you would not risk $2,000 in this trade. I'd risk 200 or maybe 250 or something like that. It has to be based on the size of your position sizing. But anyways, the, the market has made some good options trades because the market cost of the options I find is very reasonable and the market is kind of pricey right now to day trade. So we, I do do, options in in the market i don't know if that answered all the questions was there any other ones raleigh no that's good for right now thank you melissa okay all right let's talk about the twitter so even though i love to short uh twitter was a good one twitter had earnings this was back god it feels like a million years ago but it was only three weeks ago twitter went up 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 and this was what was the date here it was the 10th this closed here, this gapped up, boom. So it closed the night before here, right around, I don't know, I think it was like 59, it was under 60. Open here around 66. 
So we did do options in this, we did calls and we went long it and we went long it here and we went long it here and we did a million trades in this because it kept going. And so we kept doing them and doing them and doing them. And sometimes when I stick on something and I love something and I really, really love it, like the Walmart even, I'll, I'll keep doing it. I'll just keep doing it until it stops working. Because when you get one good gap, sometimes you can just parlay it off into multiple, multiple trades as day trades or options or do it several days down. The DDD was another one. You could have done the second day down too. So that, again, that's so, you know, it's so nice to have that, that follow through. And even though the market has been extremely choppy and we haven't seen follow through yet, yet in the market, um, I really think that stocks are just a lot more easier to day trade because, because of the, the nice follow through you can get with stocks. So this was a long, okay, here's the advanced risk and beginner risk for the Twitter. This was on this day here. Okay, so this was this, this guy. We entered at 73. I'll show you the one minute in a minute. Boom. Got more than a buck out of it. Almost $2. We had a great exit on this. I'll show you that in the one minute in a minute. 7470. 2,800 shares, profit, $4,780. That just that bar. Just that bar there alone. And I don't think this is too expensive to do to do on margin either. But again, you have to look at the size of your your available buying power. A thousand shares with this could have made seventeen hundred. Again. Just that one little bar there. We also did this here though, and we did it there too. Now let's look at the one minute. So this was the day, here we are, 216. So we got in at seven, we were actually got in this a little late, to be honest with you. So we got in this at 73, got the rally up, boom, out. We had a beautiful exit on this. We did enter it a little bit later than I normally would. Um, and we were in this for maybe about 50 minutes or something, it wasn't quite an hour. But, it, you know, that's still fast when you consider the market's open for six and a half hours a day. But anyways, you could have got out of it super duper quick and just scalped it for like 70, 80 cents. You could have from where we took it because it went straight up. But that was a really, really, really nice bullish gap that we did and kept playing and playing and playing. And again, gaps move fast, which is why I like to do them. Even though I prefer to short, I will go long. If I see a really good long, I always go to the short side first. If I see a bullish gap, though, that is better than a short gap, I'll do it. But, I mean, I do go to the short side most of the time. You really only need one trade a day, though, if you're going to do this to make a living. But you have to know what to do because it is about the quality. It's about the pick. It's about honing it down. Just finding that perfect one like we did Ross today. But, by the way, I did like Wendy's, too. I think Wendy's broke. I think Wendy's did work. It took a while to set up, and we ended up doing Ross. But Wendy's was like a snail in the morning. That was a short two that I liked. And I liked JWN, but I didn't do that one either. But I think they all, all three of them worked. But you just need one a day. One a day is all you need. So you plop on the size to make more money. That's how you do it. You don't have to do a million trades. You don't have to do a million different systems. You don't have to do a million different strategies. And if you look at my charts, by the way, just go back to my charts here. Like my charts are so clean. Like you can see everything. You can see every bar. You can see the clock. I mean, you could look at this chart. This is like a beautiful, beautiful picture. My charts are so clean. This allows me to see the price because that's all that matters, the price and the gap. So I can make a decision. Otherwise it's like too many things and like you get a headache and you're like, oh my God, do I do this? Do I do this? Is it No. Look at the gap, look at the price, make a decision. Is it higher, is it lower? If it's higher, we're gonna go long. If it's lower, we're gonna short it, okay? Now, can you go long every bullish gap up? No. Can you short every bearish gap down? No. I just got done telling you I think the market flips. In fact, in fact I, I'm, I'm anxious to look at it here and we're done. But the reality is I qualify each gap that I do to determine if it's going to follow through. Follow through in the buying if it's a gap up or follow through in the selling if it's a gap down because not everyone does. Not everyone does. So I'm picking the right ones because, again, I'm looking for institutional money. That's one of the reasons why I think the market's going to flip because buying is going to come into the market and every drop because the market's so, so strong. So strong. Anyways, 30, 60 minutes a day is all you need to trade my system. That's it. And you take the option trade when I call them, put the order out, go about your business, you can put a sell order in. If it hits that day, it hits. If it doesn't, it's a canceled day order. Then you get up the next morning and see where it is. Sometimes I gap in your direction overnight or the next day you put an order in to sell it the next day. I usually do the weeklies or do them out for two weeks. So you really don't have to heavily manage 
you know, the options either. Because <laughs> I just don't, I mean, in normal times, pre-COVID, I did not sit at my desk all day. I'm at my desk a lot now because of the conditions in New York City where I live. But before that, I would be, you know, at Fox News. I'd be doing stuff in the city, getting my hair done. So I, you know, hopefully life will get back to normal one day soon. But for right now, I'm watching stuff. But, you know, people that have families and kids, and it depends where you live. I mean, some states are totally open up. And that's fabulous and great. And people are out and about and doing their own thing. So you can put an order into the option to fill you. But the day trades, you have to be there in the morning. You've got to be there between 9.30 and 10. But it is a nice way to make a living or extra money because you don't have to spend a lot of time with the day trades. It's just the question of what are you willing to do to get there? Like my class is next weekend, March 13th and 14th, not this weekend, the following weekend. It's, it's 16 hours. So it's, it's a whole weekend that you'd have to spend learning, but it's totally, totally worth it. You know, you have to put forth some level of effort and cost and commitment in order to learn how to do this. I mean, it's, you can make a lot of money trading, but it's gonna cost you something to learn it, and it's also gonna cost you the time that you have to invest in it to figure it out. Many people just wanna do things where they buy systems, where they just press a button, the computer does it for them. That's not reality. Reality is that you do have to use your brain. I have a great brain, it's one of my best assets, and it's one of the reasons that I figure this stuff out. But I teach people how to look at a chart and what to look at. And I teach people what I know, okay, so that they too can gain the skill to do it themselves. Now, while I'm mentoring people and I'm calling the trades until you get it, the fact is you learn everything in the class to do it yourself. There's no computer that is going to make you a million dollars in the market. That is just not realistic. And once you get on board with that and understand that it is up to you, actually, it's more self-empowering then. When you realize that you're in charge you're the one that's in charge. You can make this happen, but there is a skill set involved and you have to learn the skill set. So I have a skill set. My skill set is predicting price action in a gap. And my skill set also is reading the first five minutes of the day in a stock that gaps or the market. So those are my skill sets. Reading that short, short, tiny time frame, predicting what it's going to do on the big day, and then looking at the day chart and predicting if it's going to, you know, rally up like the Twitter did, which blew out, went over the high, or fall and drop like the Walmart did, okay? And I'm predicting it by looking at the gap, okay? But you've got to do something to change your situation if you're losing money trading. I, I can never feel bad for people when I talk to people on the phone or they call me and say they've been trading for, you know, 10 years and losing, why? I mean, there's so many places out there where you can learn what to do. Some are good, some are bad, but you have to find the right one. And you have to have a positive attitude. If you have a negative attitude that the trading is a, is ringed or you're gonna lose or whatever the case may be, then you know, you're know you destined to fail. Don't put yourself in that category. You must get in a positive mindset, believe that you can do it, and put the odds in your favor, which is not taking pot shots at stuff and just going on a forum like Reddit and just taking trades that you have no idea and don't understand and don't make any sense. The, what I do makes sense, okay? When I explain something to you and I'm explaining this happened because of this, you'll understand it and you'll get it. And you'll, and you'll be able to fully grasp the concept then to be able to risk your own money to take the trade because it is your whole hard-earned money and you want it to actually work. So anyways, the class I teach is called the Golden Gap Course and it teaches a rating system, which you're going to learn what? A high probability of directional bias for the entire day, preferably, okay? But even though I only trade the morning, I like to see that it could move the whole day, particularly if I'm doing an option. Big move of the day, which I always like. Early confirmation of the bias of the move between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. I'm always looking for a good target. I'm always looking for a good risk to reward, and I say it about a dollar. Depends, it could be a stock that's more expensive. It could be looking for more than a dollar. Could be looking for two bucks. But you have to be consistent with your share, quantity of the risk of the cost. So for example, say you're gonna risk a thousand bucks. That's it. You're going to risk that in every trade. So you have to risk that in every trade to be consistent, okay? And I do use stops. It's a limit order stop. But I figure out the rating system in the pre-market. That's when I do my work. I get up early. You have to give yourself about an hour, even though I'm up super duper early. The room opens at 8.30. So between 8.30 and 9.30, you could take one hour to rate the gaps. And this is what you learn in my class. It's a 26-point rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. That is what I do. That is the meat and potatoes of how I know that something like Rost is going to sell off, okay? If it would not have sold off, or if, wouldn't, if it wouldn't have rated well, then I wouldn't have shorted it, but I also wouldn't have gone long it. I wouldn't have played it at all, okay? 
In fact, on any given day, <laughs> many, many things have no plays in them. That's another reason why you shouldn't trade all day. Even if you take a trade and it works right out of the gate, you shouldn't trade, 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 because your odds go down the more trades you take as the day goes on. Things, again, like I said, are affected by the market and wiggle and jiggle. Anyways, the checklist tells you what to trade when and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock that gaps. And again, that is the meat and potatoes. Now, we're going to look at the Twitter options I did. So I have a gap options newsletter. We went long Twitter. We, we did so many. I couldn't put them all in here, all the letters we did in the Twitter. We did all calls. We did calls, calls, calls. And in fact, we were in this. I don't think I have this one in here. We were in this when this gapped up here. So we were in it. We were in a call on this day. The trade was down. And we got up in the morning, and it was up a lot. So that happens too. Now, yes, it sold off, but we were up right away when we got up. And so you just get out. Anyways, we did the 65s. That was on the 10th. Let's go back. Oh, it was a day, it was a day that it actually had the earnings. We did the 65s here. I did the 65 calls. And they worked. Cost was 215. That was cheap. This is an advanced trader risk. 7525. 35 contracts sold at 460. It was a beautiful trade. 113% return on investment. Ran up. And actually, you could have held this longer. This isn't even holding it that long, to be honest with you. Because again, my goal is 100%. If I can get that or close to what I'm out. But this continued because this was out to the 19th. So anyways, really, really nice trade. You could have taken one contract for $215 and doubled your money. So again, it doesn't matter how many you take. But I do risk more in options because I feel like I want to get the bigger move. And plus, uh, some of the things I'm doing are expensive, like the Googles and the Amazons and the Teslas when we do them. Now, then on the Friday, I'll go back and show you the chart. I did the 68s. Same expiration. I did the calls. Cost was 260 Sold at 525 Again, 102% return on investment in Twitter. So Friday, go back here. That was the Friday of the week of the day. It went, boop, went up. Took off like a rocket. Now the letter, you can see here, this one here I sent out in the afternoon. This one here I sent before the open. So if I send a trade out before the open, you're looking to take it into the open. But anyways, I send a lot out before the open. Sometimes I'll send an afternoon one like the Twitter though. That had dropped and then I decided to do the 65s. Any questions here? I see six questions, Raleigh. Anybody have any questions before I keep going here? Yeah, no, several questions have been coming up on this. Uh, uh, Melissa, once again, a good place to stop. Don't want to derail your train of thought there. But one of the things that came up several times, and I believe your answer is it's variable, but do you teach your students when they get into a trade, once they've identified it, do you like to work with a defined profit target and stop loss? Well, the stop loss is whatever you risk. And I put in the stop as far as a day trade. And I say where the stop is. I call it live in the room. I say put the stop. If I call it, I might say 50 by 25. The okay. first number is the entry. The second one's a stop. For options, what I risk is a stop. If you want to kill it, if it's down 50% or whatever, that's up to you. Some people do. But what you risk is a stop. If you risk 1000 bucks, you can't lose more than $1,000 in an option. Okay, so for example, if you're looking at just, you know, not an option, if you're just looking at a stock, you see a gap, you see a stock opportunity there, your 26 point checklist has said, guys, this is a high probability trade, nothing's for certain, but it's high probability. Mm -hmm. So you get into the trade at that point in time, do you, that's what I'm saying, do you get in with a stop and with a profit target or is, well, is that really up well, to I the I put individual? a stop in and I have the target, yes, for the Ross, okay. I'll just quickly go back here to the Ross. The one that we did today, the target was 113. So I, I, I we waited, waited, waited. It broke it, and then it started back up. I got out. That was it. I got it. exactly. And as you said, you know, you could have stayed in it all day, but whatever. You're happy. You made money at the front end. You're not sitting there going like I could make more money. You're like, this is the way we work with it. So that that question came up. I look at it times. not that I can make more money. I look at it that my job for the day is done. I did excellent. Yeah. I took the rocks. I was in. I was out. I made money. I made my goal. I am done. If you want to do this for a career, like seriously, 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 you cannot be like more, 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 more. This is how this is where people go off the rails. And you can call it greed if you want. But the reality is 
You know, it's you're, you're, you have a job. My job is I get up in the morning, I find the best thing, I trade it, I'm done, I'm out. That's it. That's my job. When I first started trading, I had a serious problem where I kept trading too. It was a disaster. That's one of the reasons I close the room in the morning and I close it and I'm done because you will get sucked into things. You'll say, oh, this looks good and this looks good. And, and all of a sudden you'll be up two grand and then you'll be down two grand. But seriously. No, I agree with you completely. You know, the big question in somebody's mind is, okay, Melissa, I, I got in at 845. I'm out at nine o'clock. Now what am I supposed to do for the rest of the day? Enjoy your life. <laughs> Enjoy your life. <laughs> what life? A, I'm sequestered. <laughs> Paper trade. <laughs> do know, something learn. else. Write a book. <laughs> I, used to go to, I used to go be on TV. Now I'm sitting here at Skype and it, and it is more challenging, but but I hopefully we get the heck out of this COVID thing here in New York uh, this summer. I don't know. Sure. Let me ask you this, and maybe once again, this is part of your checklist, but do you pay attention to news releases that might be occurring around the open of the market? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm aware of what's going on. I don't make decisions based on fundamentals, no, but I'm aware of what's happening in the world. And again, sometimes I have to talk about it on television. So I'm aware, like I'm aware of the fact that they're discussing the stimulus. That's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I didn't short this gap this morning. I don't think it's going to have follow through. We'll see if I'm right or not. I'm talking about the overall market, but I'm also aware that they're talking about the stimulus, which could create a bounce. So I'm aware of what's going on in the world, but that's not the reason that I make decisions in trades. Okay. And the last question at this point in time was, um, and once again, this may be part of your 26 step six step process is do you do you have like a basket of stocks that you tend to follow or some kind of a no, scanner I look or every whatnot? day at new stuff and if i can't oh. find anything that i might go back like if we didn't have anything today like the rost i might have gone back and done the ddd from yesterday or looked at it but uh, i look at brand new stuff every day okay great thanks melissa so anyways let's talk about job security speaking of the COVID and everything that's happened in the world in the last year Today's world is not the same as 25 years ago, or 10 years ago, or five years ago, or one year ago, pre-COVID. What we think is a secure job today may be gone tomorrow. Look at the world economy and the decisions that lawmakers are making for you. Do you want to create your own future, or do you want someone else to determine it? And I'm serious about this, because look at what's happening in the world. And again, it depends where you live, though you may feel more so about this than less. We can be great employees, productive, outgoing, hardworking, and it may not even matter to our employer in the end if the company can't keep you on. If a company has poor management, they might fail, or it depends what the industry is during this time right now. And it has nothing to do with you, nothing to do with your own skill set or anything. It could be your industry might fail. And again, it's zip to do with you. Look at the travel industry right now. Look at the restaurant industry. It's a disaster here, at least still in New York. So again, there's been many, many different times where things have happened, like we had the banking collapse and that's what, when I was doing mortgages, when I realized this myself, I said, I have to do something where I'm in charge of my life, I'm in charge of my future, the market isn't going anywhere. So the market will always continue. So if you learn how to trade, you'll be good. Otherwise you're doing something that can be negatively affected by world events. And I realized that, like I said, back in 2007, and it was, it just changed my whole mindset and I never looked back. So, you know, I was set because I knew how to trade pre COVID and I work from home as well. But many people were just taken off guard by how their whole career and their business and everything that they had in their life could be, you know, the carpet could be ripped out from under them. So when you learn how to do something for yourself, if you're an entrepreneurial person, if you're independent, trading is for you. You may have no clue how to do it. You may be losing and doing it now. The fact is you can learn how to do it, but you've got to learn how to do it from someone that, you know, knows what they're doing, okay? And actually has a strategy that works too. But if you're a skilled person with a great mind, you can learn how to do this and you can work for yourself in the market. And I do think it has a lot to do with your attitude if you are, like I said, an independent person. I like working for myself. I like making my own decisions. I like working from home too. I don't like anyone telling me what to do. Raleigh says after signing by 12 o'clock, I show up. That's about as much as I like someone telling me what to do. <laughs> but, you know, you can create your own job security. Work for yourself. You can create your own opportunity by taking it upon yourself to learn how to trade the market and make money trading. So the Golden Gap system, which is the class that I teach, is one strategy, and you do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that, and they fail all the time. It's pinpointed. It's a niche. 
I'm looking to read institutional money and the price patterns and gaps, and you don't need to do anything else, okay? It is, it is again, I don't look at the fundamentals. I'm aware of what's happening in the world. You should be aware of what's going on, but the reality is that's not the reason for making the decisions. So again, if you can trade between 9.30 and 10, when to do the fast trades, work from home, and what an unlimited income potential this may be for you. And then people always say, well, how much can you make? What do you have to risk? Again, it's one to one. You want to make a thousand, you have to risk a thousand. Want to make two thousand, you have to risk two thousand. Want to make five hundred dollars a day, that's twenty five hundred dollars a week. That's still good. That's still ten grand a month. But then you have to risk five hundred dollars a trade. I do your stops, but it is about quality, not quantity. And again, we're usually doing one trade a day. So you know. If you want to email me and want a trial, today's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you can bop in the room. If you want to email me at melissa at thestockswish.com, if you want to come in the room and listen for a trial this week, you can come in for two days. Here's some testimonials for some people. Who is this? Zen Trader. Zen Trader, this was 2020. This was 2020. Zen Trader had a really good year last year. Um, she does the options, uh, and she has done extremely, extremely well. That was a testimonial from her from last year. And then this is Elaine. Elaine's been with me about three years. She's been doing options as well and day trades. And this is Jackie. Jackie was a nurse. She quit her nursing job and is now full-time trading. Um, and she was a beginner. She was a beginner, didn't know what she was doing with anything at all. And I taught her from the ground up. So you do not have to know a lot what to do if you come to me. In fact, you don't have to know anything at all. Some people that know how to train actually have to unlearn things that they know before me. So you do not need a lot of experience to do this. In fact, you can come and not know anything, and I will teach you. But if you do have experience, again, you may have to forget some of the things that you've been doing that I do the opposite of or that are just flat out wrong. So again, what do I use? A checklist. You learn it in the class. It's a complete system. You learn the targets, the entries, the exits. You learn the 26 points. And the class is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. And the class is March 13th and 14th. This is the March class. So class tuition is $69.99. It's 9 to 5 Eastern time. Well worth the money. Now, I am doing a early bird special through Friday. If you want to sign up by March 5th, which is the week before, uh, you get the trading room free through the end of the year. This is huge. So you get all my trade calls for the end of the year in the day trade room. If you're interested in that, email me. You must email me forms to sign up. You can not sign up through the website. You have to email me and you can come if you want a trial. Email me Thursday, Friday. You still could be in the room Thursday, Friday. See what we do uh, before I take the trades. Now let's pull up the market here. If I pull this up, will you be able to see? Can we see the market there? Or do I have to click it on and off? Uh, let's see. I don't see the market yet, but you should be able to go ahead and just switch screens. Okay, let me stop share. There, can you see it now? Let's see. Yep, see it too. Yeah, there you okay. go. Okay, so here we are. So this is twelve fifty two. We got. If we get over the high, we're gonna we're gonna go green. Yep, this is what I thought. So here, let's just take a look at this. So we are at high was three eighty six eighty three. So this is what the market is trying to do. This is what I wanted to see. If we're gonna hold, this is what we have to do. We have to hold here. So if we hold here and continue and get up over the high, we're gonna we're gonna run up. Let's just look at the cues really quickly. And any questions that anybody has, let me know. Are there any other questions, Raleigh? Let's see here. I was just taking a look real quick here. Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 ba. I think we've added that news release. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, oh, yeah. One question came here, and I think you're answering it right now, is that uh, to take your course or to practice what you what you teach, mm -hmm. it looks like you're going to need real time data, just not end of day data. And well, no, you need you need a platform to be able to enter the trades and exit the trades. You can use whatever platform, whatever broker you want. Most uh, charting packages you can make look like my my uh, charts here because they're pretty pretty clean, like I said, but you will need charts and you will need a, a brokerage account. Yes, you will need that in order to trade. Sure. And like I said, because you're looking at one minute, 15 minute charts, things of that nature, just going to have to have an intraday data feed. You must have uh, an intraday data feed. Yes. I mean, if you're going to do options, you know, you could just you don't have to have the charts, but I think it's I think you you will do better if you have the charts because all the decisions I'm making are based on technical analysis. So if you want to learn it and do it, 
then I mean, why wouldn't you want to get charts? And so many places now offer pretty much free commissions and free platforms. We don't have to pay for the charts. So, I mean, that's a nice benefit right now ever since the merger with Schwab buying Ameritrade and then E-Trade turned in with the free, free too. So you can find plenty of places out there to get free, free data. Absolutely. And as you said, look how clean these charts are. These are indicators that you can get on any chart. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see if the market holds here. Um, but again, if anybody wants a trial for Thursday, Friday, I didn't even look and see what's out for tonight, uh, earnings wise or tomorrow morning. I'm sure we'll have something, but there's a big number out Friday, which is the unemployment number comes out Friday. We've unemployment claims on Thursday morning again, and the stimulus they're working on too. So I think we're going to ha kind of have continued volatility in the market, which has been making for some nice trades. Mm -hmm. uh, the question just popped up here, Melissa, and it's a, kind of an interesting one is what what increment constitutes a gap in your opinion? Because I guess a gap it could be anything like the difference, one tick difference between yesterday and today. But at what point in time does a gap become interesting to you? Do you look at a minimal sort of a spread there? I don't there? have a minimum and I don't have a maximum and I don't do anything with percentages. And people always ask me that. No, technically speaking, one penny is a gap up or one penny is a gap down. So the reality is that I don't I don't have anything where I'll look at if it's less than this or more than this. I just look at each thing individually. And that's okay. kind of what you have to do. Again, it's not like Again, you have to use your brain where you're looking at it and you're seeing what's happening. Not every chart is the same. One thing might have a big gap. One thing might have a small gap. They might both be good. It isn't, it's not like that. Do you know what I mean? Again, it's not like plugging it into a computer and saying anything with 12.5%. Doop -doop -doop. It's not like that. You must look at it and analyze it. You look at it and analyze it. You learn how to analyze it. You're going to learn from me what to look at. And then I'm going to teach you how to analyze it. And then you're going to learn the skill to do it. And then you're going to take the trade. And that's what happens. And if the longer you do it, the better you get. And I've been doing this and nothing else besides since 2008. So, I mean, I'm very good at this because I've been doing it now for, you know, 12 years going on 13. So it, it's a skill. It's not about that. It's not that easy. People that are traders have to get out of this black and white. I'll say this one last thing. And I know we're running out of time, but it's not black and white. You got to live in the gray area. You live in the gray area. It's not black, white. It's gray. You live in the gray, and that's where you're going to get rich. Outstanding. Well put. Any other questions? Uh, at this point in time, no. I think we've covered an awful lot of these here. All right. Thanks so much for having me. Stay safe, everybody. <laughs> well, listen, Melissa, thank you so much uh, for the time that you spent with us. And I know that you just had nothing to do today. You were doing your nails or something like that <laughs> since you made a fortune this morning. And as you said, the only thing that you'll accept is Raleigh telling you where to be quarter exactly. to 12. Exactly. <laughs> and that means you're a very special person, Raleigh. I'll just let you know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, I will take that. I will take that. No, this is great. Melissa, thank you so much. And folks, once again, you know, you, had, you did ask several questions here. Uh, Melissa does have a very, very specific program that she has put together. And that's part of what, you know, that she's going to be offering to you on how to evaluate, how she selects things, how you can follow her and how you can learn. And I think she made that abundantly clear. And we were just delighted to have her with us today. Let me go ahead and grab the screen here. That was Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh, her Golden Gap course. Learn how to find those golden gaps every morning. You know, you're going to learn a 26-point rating system to determine the best trade. And there's an awful lot that goes into those 26 points. And I think she shared that this is something that she prepares every morning. And it's part of what you're going to be taught to do as well. The special offer here is for people that sign up for the program. Uh, I think it is by the 5th of March. We'll also get free access to the Stock Swoosh trading room through December 31st. So you can go to westmarktrading.com forward slash armo that will take you to the stock swoosh website or you can just go ahead and email melissa directly at melissa at the stock .com. that's in the chat panel you can communicate with her directly ask her other specific questions but once again it's been great to have her with us